Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. We love you guys. And we're excited to show you this 30 minute clip from our second video on Marvel and DC's War on God. Uh, I think you'll be rather, if you haven't seen it, you're gonna be blown away. Uh, we have so much good feedback from so many eyes that have been opened that there is indeed a spiritual war. Same thing we show in They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll or Hollywood's War on God. Uh, same things going on in a lot of the popular movies and, and, and in the whole comic world. Uh, it's exactly what the Bible says would happen in the end times. But put on your spiritual seatbelts, guys. Uh, say a prayer first because your eyes are going to be opened. We hope that you're radically blessed. And by the way, uh, we've got all kinds of content, some of the most amazing content uh, that anybody will ever see on the internet. And it's at your fingertips. We love you guys. Press on. God bless you guys. Incredibly, Marvel depicts God, the Creator, as an evil sorcerer, the enemy of humanity who must be opposed. He is first identified as a 31st century sorcerer named Sisseneg, who greatly desires the power of all other magical beings. Since Sisseneg has the ability to time travel and absorb the magical powers of other beings, he travels back through the centuries and robs each sorcerer of his power along the way. The Supreme Sorcerer, Doctor Strange, travels back in time following Sesenig, trying unsuccessfully to prohibit Sesenig at every stop from absorbing everyone else's power and becoming God. Sisseneg finally ventures all the way to the very dawn of creation and recreates the universe, becoming the god of the mainstream 616 Marvel Universe. In his mission to become God, Sisseneg declares, And once I become God, the universe and beyond shall be mine to do with as I will. Everything will be reborn as I desire it. By recreating the entire mainstream 616 Marvel Universe and having power even beyond it, as he states, he will also be God of the Marvel Omniverse, which expands from the foundational Marvel Multiverse. Now having become God and existing before the creation of all things, Sisseneg states, I have achieved my Godhood. Sisseneg, who is described by the writer as possessing all extent power, and as having absorbed all power through all timelines, then recreates the entirety of the Marvel Universe declaring, time turns and begins again with me. When you remember this, think not of the man called Sisseneg, but the God called Genesis. The name Genesis, of course, is an obvious reference to the first book of the Hebrew and Christian Bible, which records the creation account known as Genesis. Doctor Strange is now shown wondering whether Sisseneg has recreated the universe all over again for the second time, or if he simply repeated the first creation. However, this is where even more blatant references to the biblical God come into play. Even before Sisseneg's recreation of the universe, he leaves his mark on the universe and planet Earth in such a way that he is obviously being portrayed as a biblical God of creation. Here we see that Marvel works in the biblical narrative of the biblical cities Sodom and Gomorrah. Here we see Sisseneg desiring to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for what he calls their, quote, sin and degradation. In fact, we read in the Bible in the book of Genesis, Then the Lord said, The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. Under the backdrop of what is portrayed as Sisseneg's unmerciful character, Doctor Strange is made to look like a compassionate good guy. Doctor Strange pleads with Sisseneg not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, claiming that their sin isn't really that bad and that he doesn't really know them. Nevertheless, in the next panels, we see that Sisseneg is destroying Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. The biblical book of Genesis states in chapter 19 that, quote, Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. We also read in Genesis chapter 19 that Lot and his family escaped, but Lot's wife looked back and was destroyed by the Lord. In Marvel's Gnostic version of the story, the parallels are absolutely undeniable, as we see Lot and his family in the first panel escaping the judgment. With Lot warning his wife in the next panel, do not look back, wife, we must put our time of wickedness from our minds. Then we also see Sisseneg create an Eden-like garden with two ape-like hominids, which are supposed to be Adam and Eve. Note the apple in the lower right side of the panel. Incredibly, Doctor Strange, as the one who is portrayed as Marvel's key man to fight against God at both the creation of the universe and the end times, had a test run prior to his existence to see if the world was ready for a superhero modeled by Satanist Aleister Crowley in the form of Doctor Droom, not to be confused with Doctor Doom. Doctor Droom, 
as the Sorcerer Supreme was a precursor to the one who would eventually be recast as Doctor Strange just two years later. Now notice the obvious resemblance between the magician Dr. Droom in his first appearance in 1961 and the obvious resemblance to Satanist and magician Aleister Crowley. There is no doubt once you examine the facts that Dr. Droom and later Dr. Strange were based on Satanist Aleister Crowley. In his Marvel origin story, Dr. Droom, like Aleister Crowley, is British. Like Crowley, he desires to go to the East for more occult knowledge. He states that he wants to acquire first-hand knowledge and learn about the mystical arts and practices. Like Crowley, Dr. Droom actually goes all the way to the Himalayas. Crowley made repeated infamous trips to the Himalayas, one in 1902 where he waved his revolver at other climbers and assisted he take his occult library up K2. Crowley returned to the Himalayas in 1905 when four members of his team fell to their deaths he didn't even respond to their cries for help. He wrote that he had no sympathy for them and that he had passed their dead bodies later without even stopping. These deaths would be but a few of the many mysterious deaths that followed Crowley in his wicked wake, including several suicides and many professed child sacrifices. In Dr. Droom's origin story, he goes to visit an alien Tibetan Lama who needs medical attention. He will only find years later that the ancient Lama is the ancient one in disguise. The Lama makes Dr. Droom face a series of trials to prove himself because he is dying and wants Dr. Droom to follow in his footsteps as the master of black magic. In a reprint of Dr. Droom's original Amazing Adventures, Dr. Droom reappears with a new look and a new name as Dr. Druid. Here we see that Dr. Droom is now given some hair, so he is no longer made to look like Aleister Crowley. Perhaps because by the 1970s, too many people were now aware of who the Satanist was, and they would have made the damning connection that Marvel was glorifying a perverted Satanist and professed child killer in popular children's comics. Like Satanist Aleister Crowley, who was known for synthesizing various forms of Western magic with Eastern mysticism, Dr. Droom, and or Druid, learns how to integrate both Western and Eastern occultism. In the retelling of Dr. Droom's origin story, he is not only a Brit that goes to the Himalayas to study the occult, but like Crowley, we read that the Tibetan tells him, With a new Dr. Druid lies the power of the ancient Britons, and with my added knowledge of the East, you could never fall prey to the unknown. Do you accept my gift of wisdom? Satanist Aleister Crowley, as you can see, also used the eye in the triangle as a symbol of the new eon of the hawk-headed god of Horus. When Crowley wrote his Book of the Law, he claims to have taken dictation from a demonic entity called Iwas, who he later identifies as Satan himself. Near the end of the Book of the Law, Horus, or Satan, declares, quote, With my hawk's head, I peck out the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross. Thus, the Eye of Horus was symbolic of the new Satanic Age and the rise of the Antichrist. Here we see that Dr. Droom, now called Dr. Druid, like Crowley, also used the occult symbol of the eye in the triangle. We see this symbol over and over again in depictions of Dr. Droom. Of course, the eye in the triangle was later worked into the supreme sorcerer Dr. Strange's attire as well, but then called the Eye of Agamotto instead of the Eye of Horus. Calling it the Eye of Horus would have been just too obvious. Stan Lee, who said he always liked Dr. Droom, further stated, and one day, while we were trying to think of some new heroes, I thought I'd like to bring back a magician. And I gave him the name Dr. Strange. Even Wikipedia got this one right, stating, According to Lee, Dr. Dream was essentially succeeded by Dr. Strange. However, while Dr. Strange was no longer bald like Dr. Droom, or even balding like Droom's retelling as Dr. Druid, Stan Lee still created Dr. Strange in the image of the Crowley and Dr. Droom as the Supreme Sorcerer. They even blatantly borrowed major elements from Dr. Droom's origin story, which again mirrored much of the life of Satanist Aleister Crowley. Like Dr. Droom, Dr. Strange goes to visit the Ancient One. Though no longer disguised as a Tibetan Lama, Dr. Strange, like Dr. Droom, also goes to the Himalayas this time to a place called Kamar Taj, described as, quote, a hidden land high in the Himalayas. However, this time rather than going to give medical attention, as Dr. Droom did, Dr. Strange goes to receive medical attention for his mangled hands, which were harmed in a car accident. Like Dr. Droom, the arrogant Dr. Strange must pass a test before he is conferred with the power of black magic. Note in this comic how Dr. Droom, or Druid, is told that he was the precursor to Dr. Strange, and how Dr. Druid responds by stating, But I never imagined I was simply a test run for Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange would be infused with even more satanic symbolism than his predecessor, Dr. Droom. Here we see, like the founder of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, doing the devil horns. Here we see Dr. Strange repeatedly flashing the satanic salute. Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness made nearly a billion dollars in just a few months after its initial release, second only to Spider-Man No Way Home for Marvel movies during the COVID era. 
The movie Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is filled with occult imagery and the glorification of demonic powers. Even secular reviewers admitted the movie was demonic and were surprised that it got away with so much and was able to maintain a PG-13 rating. I think this is as far as the MCU can go with horror. It has the nastiest kills, the creepiest monsters and creatures, there's the undead here, and this is the goriest MCU film. I was a little bit surprised that they were able to get away with as much as they get away with in this film and still get a PG-13 rating. It does deliver, uh, I think, a leveling up of some of the intensity, especially just within certain images and certain deeds done and depicted in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There are certain things that are actually kind of shocking in a way I was not expecting this movie to go to in a horror kind of setting. So yeah, very much pleased by that. And it feels appropriately sinister and mystical and sort of outside the realm. They do really have a great grip on that sort of occultish end yes. of the MCU. And, and they it gets pretty demonic at points in a way I was kind of surprised by. It gets pretty demonic at points in a way I was kind of surprised by. While these reviewers seem quite surprised that Marvel has gone so demonic with Doctor Strange, when you know the true history of Doctor Strange going way back to Doctor Droom as a Lester Crowley, this is not shocking at all. Yet the story gets even darker as we look at a witch who's introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe who has her roots right on the heels of Doctor Strange and has a relationship with him and the occult. Dr. Droom was rolled out by Stan Lee and by Jack Kirby in the image of Satanist Aleister Crowley in the year 1961. Kirby is not only one of the top creators behind many of the most popular comic characters, but he apparently opened himself up to demonic forces and demonic possession as a child. A couple years after Stan Lee and Jack Kirby rolled out Satanist Aleister Crowley in the form of Dr. Droom in 1961, he'd be morphed not only into Dr. Druid, but finally into Doctor Strange. And in 1964, they would also roll out Wanda, AKA the Scarlet Witch, which is reminiscent of Crowley's Scarlet Witch, which he dubbed the Scarlet Woman. Crowley twisted the Whore of Babylon mentioned in the biblical book of Revelation, chapter 17, which speaks of the wicked city which rides upon the beast or the Antichrist empire and how she is spiritually polluted with sorcery, a lust for money and power, and is filled with the blood of the martyred saints. The book of Revelation says of the scarlet whore of Babylon, quote, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, and it was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Crowley, who identified with the beast the book of Revelation hoped to fulfill the role of the Antichrist, used this biblical personification of the Scarlet Woman as an object of worship and his own personified sex magic whores, of which he listed over half a dozen women who played that role as the Scarlet Woman in his sex magic rituals. For Crowley, the role of the Scarlet Woman was to work with the beast to manifest the birth of the satanic Eon of Horus to replace Christianity. To get an idea of how Marvel's Crowley and characters are impacting young people who are watching the Disney Channel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and other satanic programming, we can see the huge impact of comic aficionados like Comic Girl 19, who has about half a million subscribers to her channel. Here we see her dressed in scarlet like the Horror Babylon with her golden cup by her side, celebrating the Scarlet Witch. Comic Book Girl here notes that she sees a number of parallels between the teachings of Satanist Alessa Crowley and how to worship the Scarlet Witch in Disney's WandaVision series. Speaking of witches, now let's take a moment to discuss some of the things in the show that pinged my occult radar. Now, one of the divine deities that the Thelemites worship is Babylon, AKA the Scarlet Woman, AKA the Great Mother. Oh, wow. And how do Thelemites worship Babylon, Mom? Followers, or adepts on the path of Thelema, set themselves on a spiritual journey. And on this mystical quest, they must cross what is called the Abyss, a great void of nothingness, an in-between place that straddles perceived manifest reality and the pure source energy beyond physical existence that is the true formless form of the material universe. 
While traveling the abyss, one will be tested by the Dweller in the Void, a demon named Koranzan, who will try to trap you in a world of illusion and keep you from the Scarlet Woman, who is just on the other side of this place that is not a place. And if one is able to cross the abyss without being trapped and get to the other side, then they must give themselves fully to Babylon, and then they will be reborn as a master. Comic Girl is so enthralled with occult themes and what the Book of Revelation depicts as evil with regard to the Scarlet Woman that she goes on to promote Alan Moore's Promethea, which is also inspired by Satanist Aleister Crowley. If you're interested in reading a comic that beautifully illustrates the idea of a Scarlet Woman presiding over an ideological apocalypse, as well as taking a trip through the Kabbalistic spheres, then I highly recommend checking out Alan Moore and J.H. William III's Promethea, books one through five. You will not be disappointed. Wanda Maximoff, or the Scarlet Witch, started off as a mutant, but she's had her origin story recanned, and she became a witch capable of wielding chaos magic. The essence of chaos magic is the ability to change reality through perception and magical means, which is exactly what Wanda is capable of doing. Comicbook.com states, quote, Wanda is the Scarlet Witch of chaos magic. The concept of the Scarlet Witch was not only inspired by Crowley's Scarlet Woman and the biblical whore of Babylon, but Crowley's satanic teachings on magic are considered one of the major influences behind chaos magic. Wikipedia's page on chaos magic cites Aleister Crowley along with Austin Spear as the early influences of chaos magic. Cambridge University's website states that, quote, chaos magic, which they spell with a K, is an innovation of 20th century occultism that draws influence from a variety of sources, including occultists such as Aleister Crowley and Austin Osmond Spear. Chaos magic is often spelled with a K at the end of the word magic because this spelling was originally introduced by Satanist Aleister Crowley because he believed that the letter K was his magical Kabbalistic letter. The Scarlet Witch uses this Crowley and Satanic chaos magic throughout the 2022 movie Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. In episode 8 of Disney and Marvel's WandaVision, the witch Agatha Harkness reveals to Wanda that she is a limitless well of chaos magic and reveals to her that the dark powers of chaos magic that she channels make her the Scarlet Witch. You're supposed to be a myth, a being capable of spontaneous creation. Here you are, using it to make breakfast for dinner. Let go of my children. Oh yes, your children. <laughs> the vision, this whole little life you've made. This is chaos magic, Wanda. And that makes you the Scarlet Witch. Disney and Marvel for years have seduced countless young people into witchcraft and the occult, considered abominations to God by advertising occult powers for those who would open their hearts and their minds to these powers through their movies and TV shows. Here we see shirts that have been made promoting the Scarlet Witch and the Crowley inspired chaos magic. In the Marvel Universe, the Scarlet Woman, or Scarlet Witch as they call her, has a couple of her own moon children. She does this through a metaphysical relationship with Mephisto, who is often depicted as Satan or Marvel's equivalent to the devil. Some of Mephisto's other aliases, according to Marvel, include Satan, Mephistopheles, Lord of Evil, Prince of Devils, Prince of Lies, Beelzebub, the Devil, Lucifer, many of which are terms used for Satan in the Bible itself. The result of this metaphysical union between the Scarlet Witch and Mephisto is not one, but two magical beings or moon children. The Scarlet Witch not only uses, as we have seen, Crowley and inspired chaos magic, but she uses the powers of Mephisto's spiritual essence to magically birth her two sons, Tommy and Billy. After Mephisto finds out what the Scarlet Witch has done, he reabsorbs the essence of the two children back into a satanic being. Then Agatha Harkness casts a spell to make the Scarlet Witch forget her children. However, the two moon children, Tommy and Billy, are later reincarnated as magical children known as Speed and Wiccan. The name Wiccan is incidentally inspired from the brand of Crowleyan witchcraft known as Wicca, which is a popular form of witchcraft based largely on the teachings of Satanist Aleister Crowley. 
One of the central features in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is the use of evil spells and dark magic. The main book used for occult spells, both by Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch, is the demonic book Darkhold. In Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the Scarlet Witch uses the evil book Darkhold to find which universe her moon children are in. The Darkhold book is also called the Book of Spells, the Book of Sins, and the Book of the Damned. According to Marvel, the book Darkhold was created by using dark matter from the Hell Dimension, and reading it can cause the corruption of one's mind. In Disney Plus's WandaVision, the Scarlet Witch is informed by the witch Agatha Harkness that an entire chapter in the Darkhold book of the Damned is dedicated to the Scarlet Witch. Did you know there's an entire chapter devoted to you in the Darkhold? That's the Book of the Damned. The Scarlet Witch is not born, she is forged. She has no coven, no need for incantation. Your power exceeds that of the Sorcerer Supreme. Your destiny to destroy the world. The Book of Spells, Darkhold, which was originally written on human flesh as a parchment, according to Marvel, was written by an ancient demonic entity and is currently fused together by the Scarlet Witch. In an interview with Cinema Blend, when Sam Raimi, the director of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, was asked if he saw a link between the occult spellbook Darkhold in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the occult book of the Evil Dead, known as the Necronomicon, Raimi responded by saying, Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. There's always those evil books in these stories, and um, that's just another, another bad one of those. In virtually all of Raimi's Evil Dead horror movies, the Necronomicon, like Darkhold in Marvel, is also an evil spellbook that is written in human blood and bound together by human flesh. There's also a demonic spellbook known as the Necronomicon in Marvel canon, which was taken from part of the demonic book Darkhold. In Doctor Strange Nightmare, Doctor Strange has his own copy of the evil spellbook Necronomicon. One of Doctor Strange's sentient books on magic states that it was written in blood on the flesh of the damned and tortured. We need to really ask the question, is such darkness really profitable for us to watch? And are these the kinds of stories and heroes that God wants our children to emulate? Another demonic tie between Doctor Strange and Satanist Celeste Crowley is the dark occult book, The Necronomicon. The Necronomicon not only mentions the need for human sacrifices to summon certain spirits, but describes the need for 11 human sacrifices to summon the demon Tiamat. Marvel Comics, as we have seen, is rooted in Gnosticism, wherein the creator of the main Marvel Universe is depicted as an evil sorcerer in the form of Sisseneg and who parallels God in that he creates Adam and Eve and destroys, as we have seen, Sodom and Gomorrah, just as in the Bible. But as in Gnosticism, the creator God is always treated as less than the Almighty God, so those who are duped by Gnosticism can believe that they don't need to submit to him and also can perhaps defeat him. We have seen that Doctor Strange in the form of Aleister Crowley is portrayed as the good guy trying to fight Sisseneg, the creator of the Marvel Universe. The two most highly acclaimed comic writers of all time, Alan Moore and Grant Morrison, acknowledged nearly going mad after encountering demonic forces associated with practicing Satanist Aleister Crowley's magic. In the introduction to the popular occult book, The Necronomicon, written by Simon, who as we have seen is the Crowleyan writer Peter Lavenda, he warns that anyone who attempts to use the spells in the Necronomicon may unleash dangerous forces. In leading comic writer Grant Morrison's article on pop magic, he admits that those he's instructing in contacting demons may not be able to handle, quote, the intense negative feelings demons embody, and even has a section in the article on banishing rituals because he states that when contacting these demonic entities, quote, there's always a danger of obsession and madness. When the famous English actor Sir Christopher Lee responded to rumors of his allegedly extensive library of books glorifying the occult and black magic, Lee at the University College of Dublin warned that practicing the occult will cause one to lose both their mind and their soul. I have met people who claimed to be Satanists, who claimed to be involved with black magic, who claimed that they not only knew a lot about it, but as I said, I've certainly haven't been involved and I warn all of you, never, never, never. You will not only lose your mind, you lose your soul. You will not only lose your mind, you lose your soul. Do you regard black magic as being purely fictitious or is there some truth in it? Some truth? 
100% true. There is nothing fictitious about black magic in any way whatever. It is a fact. It is a fact uh, which has existed for several thousand years. I mean, when we talk about black magic, we are talking about Satanism, necromancy, alchemy, witchcraft, the worship of uh, Satan, um, the worship of dark forces, whether it's voodoo, juju, whether it's something practiced in the Western world or the Eastern world, uh, whether it's uh, easily defined or not easily defined, the order of the left-hand path, the, the following of this, the following of that. It is basically the worship of the force of evil as embodied by Satan, Lucifer, the princes of darkness and their legions and so on. The famous sorcerer Nostradamus warned in a letter to his favorite son, Caesar, against practicing magic, which he stated is condemned by the scripture and leads to eternal damnation of the soul, declaring, quote, also, my son, I beseech you not to exercise your mind upon such reveries and vanities as drain the body and incur the soul's perdition. Above all, avoid the vanity of that most execrable magic formerly reproved by the Holy Scriptures. Elvis Presley, who was in contact with the spiritual world and used occult practices, planned on marrying his living girlfriend, Ginger Alden. He was planning a wedding ceremony which would be held under a pyramid-shaped arena Quote, in order to focus the spiritual energies upon him and Ginger. The wedding never took place. According to Ginger Alden, Elvis died of a massive heart attack and killed over onto the floor while reading the occult book, Sex and Psychic Energy. Dark demonic powers may bring you temporary money and fame, but ultimately they always lead to destruction and damnation. In 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13, God's word tells us of King Saul, quote, Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, and he even consulted a medium for guidance. King Saul engaged in a seance and sought to have the witch of Endor call a familiar spirit to divine the future. King Saul was rebuked by the prophet Samuel, who declared, quote, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. King Saul was condemned to death and died shortly thereafter. The Lord Jesus Christ warned in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, that, quote, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. If we want to be set free from Satan's power and the wrath of God we deserve, we need to renounce the hidden works of sin. We need to repent and put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus declared that the greatest of all the commandments is that we're to love God with our whole heart, soul, and all our strength, and all our mind. The first of the Ten Commandments is that we are not to have any other gods or idols before the one true God. This is the sin of idolatry. God warns in His Word that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether they are in heaven, on the earth, or in hell. He wants to make sure that you have an opportunity to turn to Him and receive the gift of eternal life before it's too late. The Lord does not desire that you die in a lost state and go into a crisis eternity in outer darkness forever and ever. You get to choose whether you will bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ now in repentant faith and live a blessed, happy life in eternal bliss in His presence forever and ever, or whether you will bow down before Him for all eternity in a conscious state of eternal torment in the lake of fire. We encourage you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to surrender to Him right now so that you may have eternal life. Incredibly, though each and every one of us deserves to go to hell, the Apostle Paul, who called himself the chief of sinners, declared that God saved him, the worst of all sinners, to reveal to you and me that if God saved Paul, he would surely save us if we would but turn to Jesus in faith. Paul made that declaration in 1 Timothy chapter 1. He goes on to state a few verses later in chapter 2, verse 4, that God wills that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He shows God's heart of love toward you. And then in verse 6, we read that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all. God became a man and gave himself a ransom out of his great love for you. In Romans chapter 5, we're told that while we were yet sinners, God's enemies, that Christ died for us. The word ransom refers to a payment that is made to get someone out of prison. Jesus died for your sins and rose again from the grave to set you free from captivity to Satan and save you from demonic chains and the punishment we deserve. In His infinitely great love, the Lord Jesus Christ absorbed your punishment on the cross in your place, paid for your sins and the sins of the world. Do not dare reject His great love for you and the sacrifice He made for you on your behalf. Otherwise, tragically, you will regret it for eternity to come. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, what happens to all those who reject Christ's sacrifice on their behalf as the perfect Lamb of God. It declares, quote, 
And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. May the Lord richly bless you as you seek his face and live your life to his eternal glory. Hey, Joe Schimmel here. We want to thank you for watching. We want to also encourage you not to forget to sign up or subscribe to Good Fight Ministries' YouTube channel. We have the most amazing content. We also have the very popular Good Fight radio show where we examine all kinds of things in light of Scripture, as well as 5.11 News, which is also very eye-opening. And we also have mind-blowing video exposés that you won't see anywhere else. And our 24-7 online radio station, the Good Fight Radio Network, as well as my sermons from Blessed Hope Chapel over on the Blessed Hope Chapel YouTube channel. So thanks again. We'll see you later. And we just pray that the Lord blesses you richly as you seek his face. God bless.